feeling a lot of pain i'm not even gonna lie to you my leg is killing because just as i was getting ready to go out yeah i was actually getting ready to go out a lot earlier but everything just kept on getting in my way and then i was running to get my little tripod and boom hit my leg leg mash up well it's not mash up but it's hurting in it it's hurting um i can't even really show you because obviously i've got a leg in but i'm limping a little bit um but the show must go on breakfast have to cook it was supposed to be breakfast now it's probably looking to be brunch so yeah um got my little head scarf this morning put on a little lipstick for what reason i do not know because once i put on the face mask it will all come off anyway so i mean let's get to it um fried dumplings seasoned beans sausages fish fingers all of that one little chanel style brekkie coming soon so yeah stay tuned oh yeah i forgot to say i'm going to the supermarket that's the reason why i'm out i'm going to the supermarket to get the rest of the things because i have everything then i realized i don't have beans how could i not have baked beans so i'm going to the shop to get beans we'll be back so i got the beans the plan was never actually to go to co-op it was to go to asda but i couldn't even reach that far i basically live closer to a co-op and then a bit further to go to an asda but no there's no way my leg is busted it's hurting but we're still gonna cook because i've got to eat if i've got to take some medication then we've got to eat so yeah back home to go and cook so guys, we're back in the kitchen. My legs hurting still, but we move. We're about to, you know, cook up a little something here. Was gonna add plantain to the menu, but my plantain got too ripe and it's too mushy. If you don't know about when plantain gets ripe, basically you want it at like the right amount of ripeness to be able to be fried. Basically mine was too soft, left it for too long. So, we're not having fried plantain today, but what we are having, chicken and beef sausages, fish goujons, I think these are haddock, um, fish fingers, hash browns, some seasoned beans, all the stuff there for seasoned beans, either some fried eggs or scrambled eggs, I'm not really sure which one yet, and what a lot of you have been asking for, if you know why I've got the flour out, you know you might be able to see the wild guess up in the comments there but this is for breakfast so first of all we're going to start on what we're using this flour for here okay so what you need to do first is get yourself a bowl any bowl will be fine but i find that using a metal bowl just helps for what i'm about to make and you're going to need a sieve now in any jamaican breakfast or most jamaican breakfast what you normally have is fried dumplings so that's what we're gonna make today I kind of gave it away at the beginning anyway so it's not really a surprise but hey ho we've got about a cup of flour in here and you just want to sieve that flour into your bowl and I guess sieving it it just makes the flour softer and especially because you're going to um to knead it and then leave it to the side it's not necessarily going to rise but doing this process it obviously it helps you don't want the lumps in there you don't want any extra bits you know so you just sieve it totally out like that and then your flour is good to go and what you want to do next is you want to add some salt i add about a teaspoon of salt but not like a heaped teaspoon it's just like that amount just add that in and the reason why I don't add much salt is because my little secret ingredient, or some people do add this, is butter. It just gives it a little bit of extra flavour. And I'm going to add about a tablespoon of that in there, okay? So you can just use, obviously, clean hands. Just make sure you wash your hands. Me now, obviously, I'm wearing the glove, <laughs> but it's up to you. You just want to kind of just start to breadcrumb it so just mix your room temperature butter in with your flour self-raising flour as well and just kind of 
get it all in there like this what i actually used to do i was taught this um by my grandma is taste the flour before you add the butter obviously um mix the um the salt in there and then just dip your finger in and taste it in order to know if it's got enough salt or not obviously because i've been doing it a little while now it's not too bad i've got to know what i'm doing so so yeah you just keep on going like this and once it's all bread crumbed up just like that what you want to do is slowly begin to add your water now here i've got about i think about two cups of water but you're not necessarily going to add the whole thing you just want to add it gradually and just mix it in like so and just again if this is a it's a slow process but the more love that you put into your food the better it's going to turn out so just take your time just begin to bring the mix together like so add a bit more water in again so as you can probably see now it's starting to take shape it's doing a little something something here now but don't be fooled if you start pouring too much of this in because you get impatient you're going to need to add more flour and if your dough does get too sticky obviously add a bit more flour but you don't want to be adding too much flour every time it gets too sticky if you know what i mean that's why the best thing to do is just kind of work your way eventually start to knead it into a dough like this so even to this someone could think oh let me add more water keep kneading it just keep kneading it and what i used to do as well my grandma taught me wipe your bowl with the flour with the flour with the dough so that you can have a nice clean bowl afterwards that's how you know that you've incorporated all the ingredients and boom it should just start to come together like this now that didn't actually take me that long so once you kind of get your groove in, obviously you just start kneading it up like this so that you can get a nice, soft dough, okay? And then what I always do, I always leave it to the side for a few minutes. Maybe even I'll start the beans, start everything else, and then I'll fry the dumplings just so that they're nice and fresh and hot and crispy. Okay, so I've been kneading this for about 10 minutes just to make it get nice and soft. You don't want to over knead it, but you don't want to under knead it either because if you don't knead it for long enough, then you'll have rocks. It will just feel like one hefty rock in a mold. So you've got to just keep, keep going until your dough is nice and soft. Normally the way to check after doing it, obviously you can see me handling it here. But if you just get it into a bit of a ball, put it in the middle, press it, and if it slowly springs back, then you're good to go. Now, some people would normally add um, baking powder to the mix. Depends on how big you're trying to get them. This is just breakfast, so we're not out here trying to make burger buns. We're just making a few dumplings, okay? So the baking powder is optional if you want to add it to this one but you can you could maybe add maybe half a teaspoon maybe a quarter teaspoon not too much if you did want them to be a bit bigger but we're using self-raising flour so they will still swell up then after your dough is all together and done you want to cover this with some cling film and then just leave it to the side and that helps it it just helps it like you're gonna see you're gonna see afterwards what i mean okay so i've covered my dough in cling film now i'm just gonna leave that to the side to just rest and then i'm gonna give it an extra knead once it's done okay whilst we get on to part two which will be the seasoned beans i'm going to put the hash browns and the fish fingers into the air fryer. These are fresh goujons, so they won't take as long as the frozen fish fingers and the frozen, ha frozen <laughs> hash browns. So I'll put them in probably about a few minutes after. I would say put these, not these, put these in at 
maybe 170 for about 10 minutes and then check on them if they're about halfway done you should be able to tell then obviously add these but i'll show you in the air fryer anyway so i've got my air fryer out i'm just gonna add my hash browns and my fish fingers people always say to me what air fryer do i have i have the power air fryer excel okay so you want to turn on your air fryer well plug it in and then push in the drawer and what you should see is you should see the little on sign there turn it on and then it will say 180 you can change it as low as high as you want i want 170 time let's do it for five minutes and then we'll check it after five minutes okay so change of plan what we're gonna do because your dumplings will take about 10 to 15 minutes to cook so whilst we are frying those we're gonna put our bits and bobs in the air fryer okay so pause your air fryer like i have done just plug it out put it to the side um yeah leave your meat so if you're cooking obviously pork sausages or any other meats then just account for that but because obviously we're just cooking little fish fingers and a few and a few frankfurters i can't talk today and a few frankfurters um yeah just push them to the side and then get started on your seasoned beans so what you want to do you want to get a saucepan you can use a frying pan or a shallow pan to do your seasoned beans in but i just find that it depends on how much beans you're making really i'm making beans enough for two people so this is a bit big but you could use a smaller one if you wish but this one will be a good size so you just turn the fire on and you're going to add some butter to the pan okay what you want to do you just want to melt get that butter all melted okay right now once your butter starts to melt just kind of stir it around in the pan a little bit make sure your heat's not too hot you don't want the butter to burn and then you just want to add some onions in not too much maybe like two tablespoons of chopped onion depends on how much you like onions normally i don't chop them so fine these are left over from a recipe so I'm using up the onions but you can chop them bigger or smaller totally up to you obviously the smaller you chop them the quicker that they will cook so okay you just want to get these sauteed off let them do its thing and your onions are pretty much starting to look like this you want to add in a little everyday seasoning okay you can see that Add about half a teaspoon, mix that in. Like that. Almost so like it creates a bit of a paste. Then you want to add in your beans. Make sure they're all out of the tin. Scrape them out. And then what you want to do, you want to mix this, turn the heat down low or medium low. It depends on what kind of fire you have or electric hob. You never know what kind of cooker you have, but you don't want it to burn at the bottom. So just stir it to get all that goodness together first. And then once I do this next process, we're going to turn up the heat, okay? So what you want to do next, you want to add a little bit of water, just a little. And if people think I'm crazy, you're going to understand. You're going to have some extra good sauce in there. So add about three tablespoons of water. Keep the water to the side just in case you need to add more. And then just mix it again. Look, see, it's not watery. Now it's almost just... You've got a bit more of a sauce going on there. You know what, I'm even going to go crazy and add a little bit more because you're going to see the next bit of the process. 
So add about two tablespoons more. Mix again. And then we're going to add about two tablespoons of ketchup. We're going to add some Encona hot pepper sauce. About a teaspoon of this, depending on how you how hot you like it. Obviously, add more if you wish. And we're also going to add some black pepper. Add about half a teaspoon of that because you've already got your hot pepper sauce in there as well. And then just give it a mix. There you have your seasoned beans. You're going to let that cook for probably about five minutes on a low heat, and then you can just turn it off and then reheat it when you're ready. So, yeah, just keep that going. And then we're moving on now to our dumplings. Whatever pan you have at home to deep fry anything in, get that on the fire, put it on a high heat, and then add your oil. I'm using rapeseed oil. You want to use about a cup, I would say. Because when you deep fry, you're not exactly deep frying it, I would say you're shallow frying slash deep frying, because the, um, the dumplings don't want to be completely saturated in the oil. They almost just want to sit in there, okay? So I'm going to add about that much. It was about a cup and a half or a cup and three quarters, okay? What you want to do, get it on a medium high. Let me say medium high. Because what you need for it to do is get hot, but not get too hot. Because then you're going to need for it to cool down. So just let it get hot, do its thing slowly. And we are going to check on our dough. Also, at the same time, you can be stirring your beans. Just have them on beside your pot. Or by now, you may have cooked them and rested them off to the side. Me, I like to stew mine down for like 10 minutes. It just allows the flavors to really infuse together. I've left the dough for probably about 15 minutes now, whilst we was doing the beans and everything. And it feels really soft yeah so it's just it's just nice soft you should be able to almost cushion it in your hands to the point where you just feel like yeah this is a stress ball okay so what i'm just gonna do just give it an extra need just to get it ready for when i make the balls up and look you see how it just looks nice and smooth even down resting it does that that's what makes that happen obviously if you're making quick dumplings then you would just need to knead it until it gets like this but i like to let it rest and then it just looks nice and smooth like this shaping your dumplings so you literally just want to pull off a bit in your hand maybe that much so in your palm it should look like that and then what you want to do is just begin to massage it a little bit into your hand okay so i had to change the angle for you guys so you can see and watch me knead dumpling okay oh nearly dropped it then okay so i've got the piece that i pulled out it's about that much in my hand so just enough to fit in your palm start to rub it around like this cup it like that and then you want to slowly begin to like use this part of your hand and push it okay and just push it like that so that you create a well on the inside just a little indentation there this is how i learned from my gran again you've heard me mention this a lot um i have learned a lot of cooking from my grandma so that's why a lot of the tricks and stuff that i do i always reference her because if it wasn't for her i wouldn't know how to do these things so yeah, as I've been talking to you, I've even 
just started to do it the way I normally would. But basically what you want to do, I'm going to get a close up for you on this. So basically what I've started to do, I've started to push each corner in like this. Okay, I'm going to get another angle for you guys. So when you've got that well in the middle, you just want to push round, push round, push round. That's probably the way, the exact way that I was taught. But you're literally just pushing it into that well that you made in the middle. And then it should look like that. Okay, perfect little dumpling. There you go. And then you've got your dumpling. And then you just repeat it with your dough here. I don't know how many we're going to get, but you'll see in a sec. Okay, so as you can see, I made my first little one. So I'm going to do another one for you this way. So you're just going to pull off enough so that it's in your hand. If you want to be precise, obviously weigh them out, but you don't have time for that. So you just get your ball and just, you could literally have your music on, be vibing just like this, just getting it together. I remember, cup it like this, so that it starts to go like a ball, like that. And then once you've done that, you start to knead in the middle, create that well. And then once it looks like this, you literally start to push, twist, push, twist. It's so hard to show on camera, but you get the drift. You literally are pulling this part here and pushing it down. But for the way I've been taught, I can now just do it with my thumb around, around, round, 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 round. And then boom, we've got our pretty dumpling there. So we have our dumplings here. Oh, I think we lost one. <laughs> we have our dumplings here. I managed to get one, two, three, four, five, six, and a mini tester. Always test one of your dumplings because if not, and your oil too hot, then they're going to be all cooked on the outside and uncooked on the inside. And that's what you don't want. Okay. So just make a little mini one like this. I think my oil is ready, but I'm going to show you a trick on how to test if your oil is ready. Okay, so here's my oil. What you want to do is you want to get a wooden spoon and you just want to dip that into it. If you see bubbles like this, your oil is ready. Shout out to Quan Tran on YouTube. If you know, you know, he taught me that. Big him up because, yeah, it saves my life so many times. But yeah, just dip a wooden spoon in. If you see bubbles, your oil is ready. But still... Add in your little tester here, gently, and just let it start to go. Okay, so I've got my dumpling in. You want to get a spoon with holes just so that you're able to drain off the oil when it's cooking. Don't be like, oh my gosh, the oil is not hot enough. It's not making it brown quickly. Take your time. If you don't take your time, honestly, when I was first learning how to do dumplings, they were all nice, colour, colour, brown on the outside and then, yeah, and then on the inside, uncooked. So get your tester in there, let it do its thing. If you find that you think your oil is too low, like it's almost simmering in the oil and not frying, turn it up gently. So not even medium, I'm talking like medium low heat, okay? Because mine's on a medium low heat right now, okay? Okay, so I've turned around my dumpling and as you can see, it started to get brown. If that was any higher, this would be cooked already on the outside and not on the inside. So yeah, keep it on a very low medium heat and just let it begin to swell as well. You'll see the size difference with this because as you can see here, it's slightly bigger. But as you begin to cook it a bit more, you'll see it start to grow, okay? So my oil is fine. So what we're going to do, we're going to start to add in our dumplings now. Gently, do not let the oil splash back on you like I do. But you know, I'm kind of used to this now. I've been doing it a while. So yeah. 
and then you've got your goodness going on there with your dumpling. So I've got my little test one. Obviously it's hot, so be careful. But if you just look there. Yum. Make these, make them, make them. If the air fryer wasn't on the crunch, you'd be here. But don't worry, we're gonna get another one for you guys. Okay, so I've decided to do my sausages in the frying pan. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna add a little bit of butter. This is the same pan I'm going to do the, um, the eggs in, by the way. Just get yourself a bit of butter in there, get it all melted, and then just add your sausages. I've also done slight slits in them so that they'll slightly open up when they cook. And then here we have four eggs that I'm going to whisk up. Got some pepper and some salt in there. Then we've got our sausages and our fish goujons, which I'm now going to add to the air fryer because these are about halfway done. Going to check on our dumplings as well. They shouldn't need to turn yet though because we only just turned them. But we got that in our seasoned beans and we'll be ready. Now our dumplings are ready to flip again. And look, because I do that little pattern, it's made like a nice little pattern on the top. And these are pretty much ready to come out now. So do you see what I mean about five? about five, about 15 minutes and they're done. So what you want to do is just get yourself a plate, little dish, turn off the heat, put some grease proof paper down so that they don't get too, they don't get too oily, all that oil gets drained off and then just leave them to the side before you're ready for the rest of your food. Got the sausages going there as well. They nearly ready. So you're just going to take them out, drain off the oil. I'm putting mine in this little basket here. So our sausages are ready now. So we're going to take them out, just put them onto a plate, rest them to the side, get that same pan, and then just add some more butter. Get that melted. Like that. Get it all nice and melted down. And then once the bottom of your pan is coated, you're just going to add your eggs. Okay. The way I like to do it is low and slow because then your eggs won't burn. Okay, so as your eggs start to cook, you just want to just mix them. I find that using a spatula like this, a wooden one really helps because you can just get all that excess off of the sides and just slowly, slowly cook it. It makes them nice and fluffy. It's a bit of a, again, lengthy process, but you know, lengthy processes always work out in the end. Okay, so first we wanna add our fish fingers to the party. Get those on the plate. Our fish goujons. Our Frankfurter sausages, our hash browns, Let's make it look all good for you guys. Let's swap those round like that. Then you want to add your eggs. Those to the middle. Then you want to add some beans. And 
guys, if you're thinking, how the hell are you going to eat all of this? Don't worry. This is simply for the joy of looking at good food. This will become leftovers. <laughs> And then finally, look at that plate, gorgeous. Finally, what we want to do, we want to add a couple of our dumplings. So I'm going to put two there, just make a little bit of room for them. And then you've got your extras on the side if needed. So, it guys, brunch is served. Fried dumplings, the main attraction hash browns, frankfurter sausages, scrambled eggs, seasoned beans there in all their glory, fish goujons, fish fingers, again some more fried dumplings on the side. Let's give this a taste. Okay, so that's us done. Look at our brunch. Just look, it looks so good. So, so good. We've got to give this a try. We've got to give this a try. I've got the dumpling here. Look at that. Look at that. These dumplings here. Dip them into the beans like this. Get the goodness on there. Okay, get all that all up in there. Listen to me. Go and make this. I keep on saying to you, look, just go and make what I cook in it, but I'm being genuinely serious. Look at that. Mm. On that note, once I've got the food down, <laughs> let me give you guys a close up again. Guys, it's so good. So good. Oh my God. Okay. Mm. Thank you guys for watching another one of my cooking videos slash mukbangs. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Keep up with me on my socials on TikTok and Instagram down in the bio below. See you in the next video.